Karen Phillip and Angela Muller. Good morning to you both. Good How are you today? Uh, first up, look, there's no question, is there, that Prince George, royal or not, he, he's a beautiful little fella, so why on earth would a magazine want to Photoshop his face? US Weekly magazine has given George a makeover. I can't believe they've given him blue eyes instead of brown. They've rosed up the cheeks. They've given him lighter strawberry blonde hair. Why not just put a whole new baby on the cover? <laughs> Good point, I suppose. But look, they Photoshop everybody, unfortunately, and that's what we, are, we expected and we're used to it. Mm. Eye colour is a little bit sad. I mean, look, he's such a beautiful little baby. Yeah. But he's our future monarch, and, and I think everybody wants to think he's completely perfect. So they're simply making him more perfect than what they think he is. But what's not perfect about brown eyes? I know. Exactly. My ovaries have been twitching for the last three weeks that he's been in the <laughs> country. They? Yes, they have. Look, I think he's gorgeous, but the bigger conversation is obviously about photoshopping mm. and how we're not declaring it. You know, we're the grown-ups. We've got a generation coming through who are very aware of what's happening with Photoshop. They're on Instagram. They know the filters that they use. My daughter's school photographs were photoshopped, oh, which wow. is alarming. But what we need to do is, be, um, is declare it, disclose it. Every image needs to have um, a note under it saying if it's photoshopped, which will be every advertising and every editorial picture but that's seen these days. why do we need to keep photoshopping even school photos? Because we have to complete perfection? Because we're down that track too far mm. already. We can't turn it back. And it has been going for, you know, decades. True. But we need to declare it. My daughter is learning photoshopping in school in year eight. She's come home in from tech and she's photoshopped me. Now, I love that because it shows that <laughs> she knows what it's all about. But unless it was just being done for fun, but if it's an official record at school, uh, yes. you'd be furious if yes. your daughter's eyes colours were changed. Oh, yeah. Well, nice. well like my daughter, the 13-year-old's got, you know, like she's, she's a, got a little bit of spots and things, a few spots and that thing. I really resent that they bleach out the photo so you can't see that. I want to look mm. back. I love the year that my daughter was wearing glasses, the youngest one. And she hates that photo, but it's just <laughs> gorgeous. And yeah. we need to keep those characteristics in. We do, that, for that sure. part of life. That's how we look, you know, mm. freckles, yeah, I, I don't scars. Like it. Yeah. I think they, it, but you can't get them to stop photoshopping, that's the problem. Yeah. And I'd be jolly annoyed if I was Kate Middleton. Yeah, I think oh, so. Yes. Now, next up, the internet has allowed anyone to become a restaurant critic with websites such as Urban Spoon, Eatability. Uh, you've heard of these places, but these uh, sites, but can you always trust them? Can you ever trust them? The ACCC <laughs> wants to crack down on these websites saying they're full of fake and revenge reviews and it's damaging small business. So do you trust reviews of this type, Angela? Oh, look, I do look at them occasionally, particularly with travel, and I do trust them, but then I'm starting to be more sceptical now. My brother's in this industry, and he's talked to me about how a stinging review from oh, a former yes. employer, mm. uh, employee, can absolutely, um, you know, it, it has huge ramifications for his business. Oh, and I have a real business. problem about it. But I think we need to get back to, I went to a restaurant the other day, and the service was appalling. It was absolutely terrible. The next day, I got on the phone, and I rang the manager, and I talked to him about it, and I think we need to continue to have old conversations about service rather than just doing it in this kind of secretive meanie mouth anonymous way which is open for it's the anonymity that makes it so cowardly exactly. and easy exactly. if what people I... really had to put their true identities to it you'd get yes. a different type of review yes. well, what I think they should do is if you're going to put up a review of a, uh, an airline or a restaurant or a resort that before the actual people get to see the review you've got to put the flight number you're on your name phone number whatever say this person wants to leave a review you check to say yep that person's been yes. here or attended you don't know what the review is going to be no. and then let them post but at least it's authenticated in that way exactly at least it's not the restaurant down the road that is just open that's going to try and destroy you mm. so you need to be a consultant business. for the a triple c can you look after petrol prices too <laughs> oh that's a hard one oh that's a whole new thing <laughs> and finally imagine being able to predict your child's health height and even eye color and this is spookily related to royal baby George again, I reckon. Mm -hmm. Thanks to genetic technology, parents will be able to see what their child looks like before it's even conceived with all this DNA matching and computer predictions. What, what do you think? Is this getting out of hand? Well, to a degree. I mean, if we can have genetic testing for diseases and, and genetic mutations, then I think that's a really good thing. But when we meet a partner, if you've met someone that's six foot tall, blonde hair, blue eyes, chances are you're going to have, say, a son that's reasonably tall. Yeah. Uh, even a daughter that may be a bit taller than we you. We all do genetic selection in that way. We, we do. choose our partners. We do. Yeah, that way. But if this is if this is going to be for you know selecting the you know the the, the eye or, colour and, and or discarding embryos based yeah, on that's, yeah, that's, that's a problem, and, and I think it's just purely unethical. Yeah. Look, I, I'm I'm with you in so much as the. Um, 
prenatal screening. So I've seen a family decimated by Huntington's and I found out mm. post-birth that I'm a cystic fibrosis carrier. I would like to know that stuff beforehand. But I think the, you know, the, the problem is, is that we're getting into the area of eugenics and we're mm. starting to create mm. nations of people based on blue eyes. I mean, if you have, your wife's got blue eyes mm. and but we've got a, um, rece uh, what a, regret, a rec what's the recessive, recessive, recessive gene, gene yeah. for a brown, you've got a, <laughs> you've got a chance for a brown eyed baby. I love the subcontinent where you quite often see blue eyed children yeah. just randomly. Mm. We need that randomness. That's what nature is. And it I think is. to try and, and destroy it. And it's, yeah. it's the randomness that keeps the species healthy. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Psychologically true. rather than as, as, you know, and, and not just the physical characteristics, but emotional and psychological well, that's strength. What, uh, Angela was saying before, if we could, uh, if we could test for mental resilience, health and yes. resilience, then that would probably be better than... Height and eye colour, yeah. yeah. I, there we go. Three we, we sorted world out, serious though. topics <laughs> solved. We fixed in, the world. In four and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, now it's time for a